In this video, we will delve into the intricate anatomy of the external ear, a remarkable and often overlooked component of the human auditory system. After a brief introduction, we will begin by examining the auricle, or pinna, the most visible part of the external ear. Next, we will delve into the external auditory canal, an osteocartilaginous tube that connects the auricle to the tympanic membrane. Additionally, we will touch on the blood supply and venous drainage of the external ear, highlighting how its vascular system supports its functions. The lymphatic drainage of the ear will also be discussed, emphasizing its role in immune response and maintaining tissue health. Furthermore, the video will cover common clinical conditions associated with the external ear. Finally, we'll wrap up with key takeaways. The external ear, often referred to as the outer ear, plays a crucial role in the human auditory system. It consists primarily of two distinct parts, the auricle or pinna, this is the part of the ear that is most visible to us. Shaped somewhat like a leaf, the auricle is designed to capture sound waves from the environment. It is covered with skin and has a complex structure with ridges and hollows, which helps in directing the sound into the ear. Its unique shape also assists in determining the direction from which a sound is coming, which is essential for spatial awareness. The external auditory canal, or meatus, this is a tube-like structure that extends from the outer acoustic pore, which is the opening of the ear, to the tympanic membrane, commonly known as the eardrum. The external auditory canal is lined with skin and has several important features. It contains hair follicles that help to prevent foreign objects from entering the ear. Additionally, it houses ceruminous glands, which are responsible for the production of earwax, or cerumen. This earwax plays a protective role, it traps dust and other small particles, preventing them from reaching the sensitive eardrum. Moreover, earwax has antibacterial properties, which helps to keep the ear canal healthy. Overall, the external ear is not just a passive structure but an active participant in the hearing process, efficiently capturing and guiding sound waves into the inner parts of the ear, while also providing a line of defense against external threats. The auricle, an integral component of the external ear, is a specialized fibrocartilaginous structure with a primary function to capture, concentrate, and amplify sound waves. Its strategic anatomical position on the sides of the head plays a crucial role in the effectiveness of this function. Situated posterior to the temporomandibular joint and anterior to the mastoid process, the auricle is optimally located for sound collection. This placement, just below the temporal region of the skull, also ensures minimal interference from other cranial structures. In terms of its shape, the auricle is distinctly characterized by its vertically elongated oval outline. The concave structure of the auricle aids in efficiently funneling sound waves into the outer acoustic pore, which then leads them into the external auditory canal. This concavity is essential for the directionality and localization of sound, enhancing our ability to determine the source of a noise in our environment. The dimensions of the auricle vary significantly among individuals, contributing to the uniqueness of each person's ear. Despite these variations in size and form, the fundamental design of the auricle remains consistent, emphasizing its role as an acoustic apparatus. The auricle is not just a random assortment of shapes, but rather a finely tuned acoustic apparatus, where each ridge, notch, and groove plays a specific role in the process of hearing. The helix forms the outermost curved ridge of the auricle, wrapping around the ear and acting as a natural barrier that helps in guiding sound waves into the ear canal. The crews of the helix represent the origin or the starting point of the helix. Structurally, it appears as a curved elevation, akin to a ridge or fold of cartilage, marking the commencement of the helix's curl around the ear. Just anterior to the helix lies the antihelix, a prominent convex eminence that further aids in collecting and directing sound waves efficiently. Between the helix and is the scapha, or scaphoid fossa, a shallow concavity that contributes to the unique shape of the auricle, enhancing its ability to capture sound. The tragus, a cartilaginous projection located anterior to the acoustic meatus and concha, plays a vital role in protecting the ear canal from external particles and aids in the localization of sound. Opposite the tragus, the antitragus is positioned above the lobule. This feature, along with the tragus, frames the entrance to the ear canal, aiding in the acoustic reflection and refraction of sound waves. The concha, the hollow next to the ear canal opening, is crucial for funneling sound into the ear canal, enhancing the auditory experience. Lastly, the lobule, hanging inferior to the tragus, stands out as it is devoid of cartilage. 
Composed of areolar connective tissue, the lobule provides flexibility and durability to the lower part of the auricle. The auricle is a composite structure comprising various elements, each contributing to its form and function. The primary structural component is fibrocartilage, which imparts both flexibility and strength to the auricle. This type of cartilage is uniquely suited for the ear, providing a firm yet pliable framework that maintains the ear's shape while allowing for some movement. Surrounding the fibrocartilage are extrinsic ligaments, both anterior and posterior. These ligaments anchor the auricle to the skull, ensuring its proper positioning and alignment. They play a crucial role in maintaining the stability of the ear, especially given its prominent position on the side of the head. In addition to these, intrinsic ligaments are also present within the auricle. These are essential for maintaining the integrity of the ear's cartilaginous structure, connecting different parts of the fibrocartilage and ensuring the ear retains its complex shape. The muscles of the auricle can be divided into two categories, extrinsic and intrinsic. The extrinsic muscles connect the auricle to the skull and are primarily responsible for the larger movements of the ear, such as elevation and retraction. The intrinsic muscles, on the other hand, are found within the ear itself and are responsible for the finer, more subtle movements and adjustments of the auricle's shape. Finally, the skin covering the auricle plays a vital role. It is thin and closely adheres to the underlying cartilage, with a minimal amount of subcutaneous tissue. This arrangement allows for the detailed contours and ridges of the auricle to be visible, essential for its sound directing functions. Additionally, the skin contains hair follicles, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands, contributing to the maintenance of ear health and hygiene. Together, these structural components make the auricle a highly specialized, efficient organ for capturing and directing sound. The external auditory canal, also referred to as the external auditory meatus, is an essential component of the ear's anatomy, facilitating the conduction of sound waves from the outer ear to the middle ear. This canal, characterized by its osteocartilaginous structure, extends from the external acoustic pore of the auricle medially to the tympanic membrane. Functionally, the canal serves as a conduit for sound waves, channeling them efficiently from the auricle to the tympanic membrane in the middle ear. This process is crucial for the initial stages of hearing, as it allows for the conversion of sound wave energy into mechanical energy that the middle ear can process. Anatomically, the external auditory canal is distinctively designed. It is not a straight tube but rather features a slight curvature, forming an S-shape. This curvature is more than just a structural characteristic, it serves to protect the deeper structures of the ear, particularly the tympanic membrane, by preventing direct access to it. Additionally, the S-shape aids in the amplification and modulation of sound waves as they travel through the canal. The canal typically runs forward and inward, aligning perfectly with the internal ear structures. Measuring approximately 2.5 cm in length, the canal's interior is lined with skin. This skin is not merely a covering but contains essential elements such as hair follicles, sebaceous glands, and ceruminous glands. Hair follicles help in trapping dust and other particles, preventing them from reaching the sensitive areas of the ear. Sebaceous glands secrete oils, contributing to the health and lubrication of the skin within the canal. The ceruminous glands are particularly significant as they produce ceramine, which plays a protective role by trapping foreign particles and has antibacterial properties, thus maintaining the canal's hygiene and health. The external auditory canal, a crucial component of the ear's anatomy, exhibits a complex structure intricately designed to facilitate effective sound transmission. This canal is divided into two distinct parts based on its composition. The outer or lateral third of the canal, which extends approximately 8 mm in length, is primarily composed of fibrous tissue and cartilage. This cartilaginous section provides flexibility and resilience to the canal, allowing it to withstand various external pressures and movements. The lateral, outermost, part of the external acoustic canal is oriented posteriorly and superiorly, a design that aids in the effective capture and direction of sound waves into the deeper parts of the ear. In contrast, the inner two-thirds of the canal, about 16 mm in length, made up of bone. This bony part of the canal provides structural integrity and protection to the delicate structures within the ear, particularly the tympanic membrane. The transition from the cartilaginous to the bony section is seamless, ensuring uninterrupted passage of sound. Interestingly, the canal shifts direction in its middle portion, running anteriorly and inferiorly. 
This change in direction is not arbitrary but serves to optimize the canal's ability to channel sound waves effectively to the tympanic membrane. The walls of this bony portion of the canal are formed by different parts of the temporal bone. The anterior and inferior walls are constituted by the tympanic part of the temporal bone, which plays a crucial role in supporting the structure of the canal and the placement of the tympanic membrane. Meanwhile, the posterior and superior walls are made up of the squamous part of the temporal bone. This partitioning of the canal walls by different sections of the temporal bone is essential for maintaining the canal's shape and ensuring the protection of the inner ear structures. The external auditory canal is situated in a complex anatomical environment, surrounded by various structures. Anteriorly, the canal is closely associated with the temporomandibular joint and the parotid gland. The proximity to the temporomandibular joint means that movements of the jaw can sometimes be felt or heard in the canal, reflecting the interconnectedness of these structures. The parotid gland also lies in close relation to the canal. Posterior to the canal is the mastoid process, a part of the temporal bone, providing structural support. In addition, the facial canal, which carries the facial nerve, runs parallel to the external auditory canal. This proximity is clinically significant, as infections or other conditions affecting the ear can sometimes impact the facial nerve. Superiorly, the canal exhibits two different relationships depending on its segment. The cartilaginous segment is related to the temporal region of the skull, aligning it with the lateral aspect of the head. In contrast, the bony segment of the canal is situated beneath the middle cranial fossa, an area of the cranial cavity that houses essential brain structures. This relationship is crucial for both the protection of the canal and the brain. Medially, the canal terminates at the tympanic membrane, a critical boundary that separates the external ear from the middle ear. This membrane is the gateway through which sound vibrations pass from the external auditory canal to the ossicles of the middle ear. Laterally, the canal opens to the external environment at the external acoustic pore. This opening is essential for sound wave entry and also serves as a point for examination and treatment of ear conditions. Inferiorly, the canal again is in proximity to the parotid gland, illustrating the gland's extensive spread around this region of the ear. The blood supply to the external ear is primarily facilitated by a network of arteries that ensure adequate irrigation and nourishment of the ear's structures. This arterial vasculature is composed of several key arteries, each playing a specific role in maintaining the health and functionality of the ear. The superficial temporal artery, one of the main contributors, is a significant branch of the external carotid artery. It ascends over the temporal region of the skull, providing blood to the upper and anterior parts of the auricle. Complementing the superficial temporal artery is the posterior auricular artery. This artery, as its name suggests, is oriented towards the posterior aspect of the ear. It branches off from the external carotid artery as well, and it supplies blood to the posterior part of the auricle and adjacent areas of the scalp. Additionally, the anterior tympanic artery, a branch of the maxillary artery, plays a specialized role in the vascularization of the ear. This artery specifically targets the tympanic region, providing essential blood supply to the area around the tympanic membrane. The venous drainage of the external ear is an essential aspect of its circulatory system. This drainage system comprises several key veins, each responsible for servicing different regions of the external ear. The superficial temporal vein plays a pivotal role in venous drainage, primarily focusing on the upper regions of the external ear. This vein collects blood from the auricle and the adjacent scalp areas, effectively managing the blood flow from these upper parts. The superficial temporal vein is a major vein in the scalp and forehead region. Complementing the superficial temporal vein is the maxillary vein. This vein is particularly important for draining the lower and anterior regions of the external ear. It forms part of the venous system that drains the deeper structures of the face and, by extension, affects the circulatory dynamics of the ear's lower section. The maxillary vein, a major vein in the face, plays a significant role in maintaining the vascular balance in the area. The posterior auricular vein is another vital component of this drainage system. It specifically targets the posterior aspect of the auricle and the back of the ear. This vein ensures that blood is efficiently removed from the back of the ear, an area that could be prone to circulatory stasis due to its location and orientation. All these veins contribute to the venous drainage system of the external ear, eventually converging towards the external jugular vein. 
The external jugular vein serves as a major drainage pathway, collecting blood from the external ear and other facial structures before transporting it back to the heart. The lymphatic drainage of the external ear is a vital component of its physiological system, ensuring the removal of lymphatic fluid from the ear's tissues and aiding in immune responses. This drainage system is intricately organized into various pathways, each corresponding to different regions of the external ear. Lymph from the anterior territories of the external ear, including the areas surrounding the tragus, is predominantly directed into the preauricular lymph nodes. These nodes are strategically located in front of the ear, making them the primary drainage points for the anterior part of the auricle and adjacent regions. The posterior territories of the ear, particularly those near the mastoid process, have a more complex lymphatic drainage pathway. Lymph from this region is drained into several groups of lymph nodes, including the mastoid lymph nodes, infraauricular lymph nodes, and deep cervical lymph nodes. The mastoid lymph nodes are situated near the mastoid process and are responsible for draining the area directly behind the ear. The infraauricular lymph nodes, located below the ear, and the deep cervical lymph nodes, situated deeper in the neck, also participate in the drainage of lymph from the posterior aspects of the ear. This multinodal drainage ensures comprehensive coverage and efficient removal of lymph from the posterior part of the external ear. Additionally, lymph from the inferior territories of the external ear, particularly the regions near the earlobe and the lower auricle, is channeled towards the parotid lymph nodes. These nodes are situated near the parotid gland and play a significant role in draining the lower parts of the ear. The nerve supply to the external ear is a complex network, ensuring that this sensory organ is well equipped to transmit various sensations, including touch, pain, and temperature. This intricate innovation is achieved through contributions from several cranial and cervical nerves. The auriculotemporal nerve, a branch of the mandibular nerve which is itself a part of the trigeminal nerve, plays a significant role in the sensory innovation of the external ear. This nerve supplies sensation to the anterior and inferior regions of the auricle, as well as to parts of the external auditory canal. The trigeminal nerve, known primarily for its role in facial sensation and motor functions, thus extends its reach to the ear as well. Another major contributor is the great auricular nerve, originating from the cervical plexus, specifically from the C2 and C3 spinal nerves. This nerve provides sensation to the lower and posterior parts of the auricle and to the area behind the ear. The lesser occipital nerve, also emanating from the cervical plexus, supplies the skin of the upper and posterior parts of the auricle. This nerve ensures that the upper portion of the ear is capable of sensing touch, pain, and temperature changes. In addition to these, branches of the facial nerve, particularly from its auricular branch, contribute to the sensory innovation. Although the facial nerve is primarily known for its motor functions, its auricular branch has a sensory role in the region around the ear canal. The nervous intermedius, a branch of the facial nerve, also plays a part in this sensory network. It is involved in the sensation of the deeper regions of the ear canal, highlighting the facial nerve's diverse functional capacity. Lastly, the auricular branch of the vagus nerve provides sensation to a small area of the external ear, notably the inner part of the concha and the region adjacent to the external auditory canal. Cerumen impaction and external otitis are common clinical conditions affecting the ear each with distinct causes and symptoms. Additionally, tumors and malformations represent more serious but less frequent issues. Ceremon impaction, commonly known as earwax blockage, is a condition where an excessive accumulation or hardening of ceremon leads to an obstruction in the ear canal. This blockage can cause a variety of symptoms, including hearing loss, a sensation of fullness or pressure in the ear, discomfort or pain, tinnitus, a ringing or buzzing noise in the ears, and in some cases, dizziness. Ceremon is naturally produced to protect and clean the ear, but excessive or impacted earwax can impede normal hearing and function. External otitis, widely known as swimmer's ear, is an infection of the external auditory canal. This condition is most commonly caused by bacterial infection, though fungi can also be responsible in some cases. Swimmer's ear is frequently observed in individuals who spend a lot of time in water, such as swimmers, as the moist environment within the ear canal can facilitate the growth of pathogens. Symptoms include ear pain, which can be quite severe, itching in the ear canal, discharge from the ear, and sometimes hearing loss. Prompt treatment is essential to alleviate discomfort and prevent complications. 
In addition to these conditions, the ear can also be affected by tumors and malformations. These include aplasia, which is the absence of the ear or ear canal, and hyperplasia, referring to the underdevelopment of these structures. Such conditions can lead to significant challenges, including hearing impairment and cosmetic concerns, and often require specialized medical intervention. In conclusion, the external ear stands as a vital component of the auditory system, intricately designed and serving multiple essential functions. The auricle, or pinna, is primarily composed of fibrocartilage, a material that provides both structure and flexibility. Its primary role is to capture and funnel sound waves into the ear. This function is not just about collecting sound, it also involves the crucial task of directing these sound waves in a way that enhances their clarity and intensity as they travel towards the inner ear. The external auditory canal, an osteocartilaginous tube, plays a pivotal role in this process. Extending from the auricle to the tympanic membrane, it serves as a passageway that efficiently directs sound waves to the middle ear. This canal is not a simple tube, it is lined with skin that contains hair follicles and specialized glands producing cerumen, commonly known as earwax. Cerumen has a protective function, it traps dust and other particles, preventing them from reaching the sensitive inner parts of the ear, and possesses antibacterial properties that help maintain the health of the ear canal. Clinically, the external ear is susceptible to various conditions that can impact its functionality and the overall health of the auditory system. Ceremon impaction, where excessive earwax accumulates and blocks the ear canal, can lead to symptoms like hearing loss and discomfort. External otitis, often referred to as swimmer's ear, is an infection that typically arises from prolonged exposure to moisture and can cause significant pain and inflammation. Additionally, the external ear can be affected by various tumors or malformations, which can range from benign growths to more serious congenital abnormalities, affecting both the function and appearance of the ear. The complexity and importance of the external ear in the auditory system are evident through its intricate structure, vital functions, and the range of clinical issues that can arise.